Uh, hello everyone, my name is Alejandro Verona and today I'll be talking to you about Velocity.js and hopefully by the end of this presentation I will have convinced you to use Velocity.js over other similar alternatives. So before we begin, I would like to give a quick overview of what we'll be discussing today. First up, what is Velocity.js? Why do we need it? Why do we care about it? Second, uh, what makes it so great over other alternatives, other similar libraries? Third, I'll highlight some uh, real-world applications of Velocity.js, companies that use Velocity.js, and finally get into some really cool demo animations. <coughs> so what is Velocity.js? Velocity.js is a physics library, or better said, an animations library that really is closely, li uh, uh, closely related to jQuery and CSS. Uh, it was created by Julian Shapiro uh, to solve the problem of jQuery's sluggishness when uh, animations become too complex and very large uh, and complicated. Uh, and as you can see, it's, um, it changes its dot animate uh, in jQuery to dot velocity and uh, includes some, some other really cool features that I'll get to in a minute. Uh, and as I mentioned, it creates higher quality animations uh, that provide a smoother and crisper experience for the user. So let's talk about advantages. Uh, first up, we'll talk about frames per second, uh, and it really, like, a Velocity.js is really comparable to CSS, uh, to, uh, to native CSS, uh, where jQuery starts off really well, but like I said previously, uh, it starts to get a bit sluggish uh, as the animations get a little bit more complicated uh, and you have a lot more code to work with. Uh, so really, Velocity.js is kind of like I really like the same thing as CSS in this case. Uh, so reverse animation, uh, and what I mean by this is, can the animation know where it started? So for example, if you're trying to move a square, a div square, uh, somewhere around your HTML document, can it go back to the original point of origin? Uh, and Velocity.js does have this capability. jQuery does have this uh, capability as well, but it is very limited to the point where it doesn't take into account for random lengths of that animation. So for example, if you do a math.random to get a length uh, of where that div should go, uh, it can't go back because it doesn't store that number, that random number that it generates. Uh, and CSS does not have that capability at all. Uh, callback functions. Uh, it, uh, uh, this is a really cool concept that uh, I think Velocity.js really uh, brings out the big guns <laughs> uh, because um, it allows you to uh, call different animations, uh, different functions at certain periods of time during that animation. So if an animation is running, uh, you can call another animation once it's completed uh, during its, uh, its, its progress during the animation and even before the animation starts. Uh, jQuery is very limited in this, uh, where it can only call an animation after one animation has been completed. So think of a queue. And CSS does not. Uh, easing, easing is very interesting, uh, where the uh, uh, Velocity.js has a lot of easing functions built in already, uh, whereas jQuery uh, I marked it as an X here that it doesn't support it, but really there's a another uh, package you could download, a, a plugin of sorts uh, that bring in more easing functions, but just jQuery by itself, uh, it doesn't really give easing at all. And easing, what it is, is, which, uh, which I'll show you a diagram now, it creates uh, the, I mean, I like to think about it as a scroll bar. When you scroll, uh, it doesn't just crash to its limit. It doesn't just crash and like stop, it kind of, flows into it, it kind of goes beyond that point, it overflows and then it comes back down and gives like animations like a quadratic animation. Or like it goes, starts off slow and then goes fast and then slow again. So it's really fluid in that sense. And as you can see there's, uh, there's many different types of animations. Starts off slow, you even have bouncing animations, which I think are pretty cool. And CSS does have this, but is limited to only a few, which I believe in the other slide, they do have uh, the Bezier curve. Uh, it's not as extensive as uh, Velocity.js. 
and scrolling. <laughs> so as I mentioned previously, scrolling, uh, they, um, they all have that, uh, well, excuse me, sorry. Uh, they all have that capability, just a jQuery. Um, it takes less code for Velocity.js uh, versus jQuery uh, to get it. So think of, in, in jQuery, you would have to grab an element, uh, dot animate, and then scroll the top by grabbing that element and offsetting that by the top in a duration of 300. Uh, with velocity, it's a lot simpler. It's just grab that element, dot velocity, invoke the scroll, uh, and set the easing to ease in out expo, for example, with a duration of 300. And of course, CSS, uh, we all know, has that capability as well. Uh, although I'm sort of biased in the sense that I don't like CSS. <laughs> uh, and I haven't met anyone who really is passionate about CSS, but uh, that's why uh, I think that velocity, like just, uh, just up until now, really uh, that takes up the win uh, <laughs> for that. Uh, so last is SVG support, scalable vector graphics. Uh, they don't, so uh, a jQuery does not, uh, a support without the jQuery SVG library. Uh, the same situation with the easing. Uh, you need a separate plugin for that. Uh, Velocity.js, I believe, is the most popular library to uh, deal with, uh, with SVG animations. Uh, and you'll see uh, later on uh, some of the demos I've, I've, uh, I've chosen to show you that it really shows really fluid animations with, with scalable vector graphics. And uh, CSS uh, does have uh, support, but it's very limited uh, in the sense that it does not support positional and dimensional uh, properties, which to me is the bulk of animation. <laughs> so um, these are some of the companies that use uh, Velocity.js. Um, and if you ever venture into their websites, you could kind of see them uh, pinpoint where the animations lie and how fluid their websites have become. Uh, so now I'd like to take this time to show you some pretty cool animations. Uh, this, this animation, which I found on CodePen, uh, really uh, shows the callback function uh, where, I mean, I'll just run it now so you can see it. It starts animations at different points in time. The bottle will rotate, so uh, the code here, the bottle will rotate on its uh, z-axis and about 40% of the way through, the elephant will shrink in size to its defined uh, parameters. And then after everything is finished down here in this code, uh, the dog will pop up with, uh, with the text flowing in from the left. So once again, the bottle uh, does its animation, then 40% while the bottle hasn't finished, the elephant will shrink and the dog pops up from, uh, from beneath. So you could really see uh, the, the possibilities with callback functions within Velocity. And uh, this, just refresh, shows reverse animation. Uh, it uses math.random and it just goes back and forth uh, at a random length of that path and it always knows to go back. You wouldn't be able to do this with, with jQuery. Uh, you would have to give it a, def like a definitive um, length. And also, uh, I mean, you might have to write a double function to say, go here and then go back. I mean, it's pretty mind blowing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> so the next is uh, easing. Uh, easing is essentially uh, spring physics, as it shows here. And uh, this demo has this gray square uh, run along the x-axis, just, just a sort of fluid. And you could kind of manipulate the tension. So if you do a high tension like uh, 1,000 with a low friction of 20, you get a really fast, really rigid square, right? But if you reverse that and do, uh, let's say, five, uh, whoa. <laughs> five, 500 to, say, 40. You get a smoother, right? It seems like something heavy being dragged on the floor or something. So I think this is really cool, coming from a, uh, from a physics point of view. Uh, so SVG support, probably uh, one of the more important features of velocity. Uh, 
really shows the swing of the square. The, it, like it's just it's just very fluid and uh, smooth. If you just, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, so those are all the animations I have for you today. Um, I would like to sum up. Uh, that Velocity JS, uh, like I mentioned, and as you've seen in the demo animations, uh, is is fast. It's lightning fast, uh, especially when animations scale up. Uh, it's simple syntax. It's not anything that we don't know. It's it's simply a matter of just changing dot animate to dot velocity, and uh, knowing the key functions that you have to change within. Uh, the dot velocity, uh, as opposed to jQuery. Uh, it scales well, and uh, in my opinion, it's better than jQuery and CSS, and the possibilities are endless. Uh, thank you very much for uh, listen, uh, listening to me today, and uh, be sure to check out the references. The docs are, are really well written, and uh, will help you a lot in your animations. Thank you.